The Nikon D600 is the newest in Nikon's full-frame DSLR lineup. It is billed for the enthusiast photographer. It's sort of entry-level for a full-frame DSLR. In many ways, it's the spiritual successor to the very successful and much-liked Nikon D7000. There are many parallels, but the D600 also establishes its own identity quite well. Let me tell you one thing up front, though. I have tested the video capabilities, and they work great. But I don't use this D600 for video, or my D800, or my D300S. <laughs> I'll mention the video capabilities, but my review is slanted towards still photography because that's what I use my DSLRs for. The D600 is small for a full-frame DSLR. Previously, full-frame bodies have been very durable, but also a bit heavy and bulky. You may not see that as a drawback if you're accustomed to a D3 or a D4, but if you're comfortable with a D90 or a D7000, you'll feel right at home with the D600. Don't be fooled by the small size, though. There's plenty going on with this camera. Let's talk about the D600 sensor. It has 24 megapixels in full frame mode and 10.5 in cropped sensor, or DX mode. This is great news for those who are adopting a full frame sensor because it is a ton of resolution to work with. For those who have committed to the DX format previously, they're not left out in the cold. 10.5 megapixels is very nice resolution on working with NDX. Along with the sensor, the camera's speed is always something to take a look at when purchasing a new camera. In continuous high, the D600 can shoot up to 5.5 frames per second, whether you are in FX or DX mode. However, when in DX mode, the camera will hold more photos in its buffer, which means more photos per burst. There is an optional grip, which in some other cameras will increase a camera's frame rate, but that isn't the case with the D600. The grip won't make the camera any faster than 5.5 frames per second in FX mode or in DX mode. I'll talk to you about the D600's autofocusing modes in a minute, but let's talk about its responsiveness now. How fast does it focus? because shooting five and a half frames per second isn't feasible if you're hunting for focus all the time. There are lots of autofocus points, up to 39 with nine cross type points, plus 3D tracking with those 39 points. I'm pleased with the ability of the camera to focus in various lighting situations, and it tracks moving objects very well. One note that you will see in many D600 reviews is that the autofocus points are close together toward the center of the frame. And this will um, restrict your ability to both track moving objects and to compose them within the frame. To track moving objects successfully, you will want them toward the center of the frame so that your autofocus points can successfully do their job with tracking. Regarding storage, the camera has two SD card slots and you can choose how to write to them. You have your photos write to one and back up to the other or fill up one card and then automatically move to the next. And it's handy that the dual cards are the same type. If this is your only camera, or you have previously had cameras that support SD cards, this gives you the advantages of dual memory card slots without having to purchase two different types of cards. There is an onboard flash on the D600. Users of enthusiast cameras, and even higher end cameras like the D700 and D800, will feel right at home with the pop-up flash. It's quite adequate for fill flash and has the dual function of commander mode for your Nikon CLS compatible speed lights. Video capability is what we have come to expect from our DSLRs with 1080p capability. Here are the modes that you have and you can shoot up to 30 minutes of video at a time. It also has an external microphone jack which makes use of a lavalier mic or a shotgun mic super easy. The flexibility of the D600 is great and those experienced with the Nikon system will find everything that they have come to expect. If you're new to the Nikon system or are moving up from an older body, you certainly will find that there are a lot of settings. Remember though, the camera can be set up in a basic fashion and become more flexible when you're ready to grow into some of the more advanced settings. Now let's talk about some of the modes that you would use. You have all of the exposure modes that you would expect. They are available on a dial on the top of the camera, which locks into place. You have program mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual mode. In program mode, you have flexible program, which means that you can actually change the aperture and shutter speed ratio. It's kind of like using aperture priority light. <laughs> and there's auto and auto flash off. And you have a whole slew of scene modes, like landscape, sports, and sunset. In fact, you have 19 scene modes. And these are great for someone who knows the effect that they want, but not how to get it. 
In fact, for someone learning technique, they can observe the settings that any of the modes select, with the exception of manual, and begin to understand the adjustments that are recommended for various situations. The regular Nikon metering modes are present, you know, center weighted, matrix, and spot metering. The Nikon autofocus modes are there too. These are on Nikon's newer button and dial configuration on the front of the camera. You use the dial to determine autofocus or manual focus, then you press the button and turn the command dials to choose which autofocus modes that you want to use. You've got ways to set when the camera autofocuses, like single servo, continuous servo, and manual. And you have auto selection too, where the camera will pick single servo or continuous servo for you. Your predictive tracking will be activated automatically as well. Then you have choices for where to focus. You can choose single point, dynamic area, and auto area autofocus. There are even ways to customize these autofocus settings. The release modes are expected as well. You have single frame mode, continuous low and continuous high, mirror up, quiet shutter, remote control, you need to purchase the remote control to use this though, and self timer. And self timer in Nikons has been expanded in recent models, but I'll talk about that in a minute. For newbies and experienced photographers alike, you want a camera that isn't a hassle to use. The D600 has several eye catching features that make it easy to use. First, you have some features that aren't necessarily special, like live view, focus tracking, or having a dedicated video record button. You can also configure what you want to see on your live view screen or during playback. But again, nothing too new yet. The D600 has an info screen. This is on all of the newer Nikon DSLR bodies, so you know it isn't super special either, but I adore the info button. The info screen gives you quick and ready access to most of the critical settings that don't have an assigned button on the camera. The self timer on the D600 and other new Nikon DSLRs is expanded. In the menus, you can set the length of time before the shutter releases, but you can also choose the number of shots taken and the interval in between those shots. This makes the self timer option much more useful. Something else adding to the ease of use of the D600 is the metal hinges on the rubber covers for the connectors on the side of the camera. This doesn't seem like such a big deal until you try to use one of the connectors on an older Nikon DSLR with the floppy rubber door that was always getting in the way. One of the most eye catching features of the D600 is its user settings, U1 and U2 modes. This is a fantastic feature which allows you to store two entire collections of settings, allowing you to switch to them rapidly to change most of the settings and characteristics of the camera. As with other Nikon DSLRs, you can edit your images right in the camera, including your raw images. The retouch menu is actually pretty extensive. You can do simple things like fixing red eye and cropping, but you can also make an image monochrome and even adjust the monochrome settings like applying a sepia filter. You can even correct perspective and apply a fisheye effect. There are myriad accessories that you can use with this camera body. The D600 works with Nikon speed lights and F mount lenses. The body has an autofocus motor inside, so you can even use AF-S lenses. In fact, older AF and AF-D lenses, like my 24mm f2.8 prime, represent a great value and are fully compatible with the D600. There is a remote that you can use with the remote control mode on the release mode dial, but you have to purchase that separately. I mentioned the optional grip earlier. It allows you to hold two batteries and helps to balance the setup a bit when you're using a speed light and a heavier lens. Also, when you add that second battery, you double your battery life. Let's talk about low light capability. The D600 has an ISO range of 100 to 6400, and it's expandable to low 1 to high 2. You will find noise at the higher settings, but I don't find it objectionable. You know, that doesn't mean that I'll be locking my camera to the ISO 6400 setting, but I'm not afraid to use it when needed either. The D600 is fantastic in the studio, as expected. You can get really crisp images. And I love using the pop-up flash to optically trigger, trigger my strobes, but you can also use the Nikon creative lighting system. Some people feel somewhat limited by the 1 200th flash sync. Personally, although I always want a great sync speed, I don't feel particularly limited by 1 200th. When I take the camera outside, I also have no complaints. In fact, the smaller body makes the D600 great for hiking. The body is water and dust resistant too. The D600 is much less expensive than Nikon's other full-frame DSLRs. The body only is about $2,000 in the US. The D600 kit with the 24-85mm to lens is about $2,600. The D800 body is 
$3,000 just for the body only, and the D4 is $6,000. Let's talk about that kit for a second. As I mentioned, the kit is the D600 body and a 24 to 85 millimeter lens. Kit lenses often face a lot of criticism, but this one is no slouch. It is a variable aperture lens, but it is f3.5 to f4.5 throughout the zoom range, which outperforms kit lenses that are f5.6 on the long end. No, it's not as sharp as a prime or quite as good in low light as lenses costing several times more, but I use it without hesitation in most circumstances. Very few drawbacks of the D600 come to mind. There has been a lot of discussion about sensor dust with the D600. I've tested my review copy and I don't have an issue. If you do get a D600 and it is a problem for you, the first thing you should do is contact Nikon. But like I said, I don't have any dust visible in any of my photos and when I test for dust, the sensor has no more or less than any of my other cameras. The 39 autofocus points are a bit close together in the center of the frame. Those who have used the D1, D200, D300S, uh, D2X or H, the D3 and the D4 won't find the button arrangement that you're accustomed to. Those who have used the D50, 70, 80, 90, D3100, and D7000 will find a familiar button arrangement on the D600. As I mentioned earlier, this camera takes the enthusiast DSLR characteristics straight into the full frame market. The D600 has all of the benefits of a full frame DSLR in a fairly compact package. It's agile, it's inexpensive, you know, when you consider that it's a full frame DSLR. For photographers that are used to the advanced amateur or enthusiast level Nikon DSLRs, you will be pleasantly surprised by how easy to use the D600 is. But for photographers that are used to the higher end Nikon DSLRs, you will still be happy with the performance and flexibility. You know, there's the configurable buttons to do what you want, plus U1 and U2 modes. You won't be annoyed by more basic features like the scene modes because they're sort of hidden. You have to go to scene on the exposure mode dial and then scroll through the scene modes with the command dials. I love my D800, but it's fair to say that the D600 nips into D800 territory a lot. I can't speak for everyone, but if this is a camera that you're interested in, you won't feel limited by it. Every time I pick it up, I don't want to put it down. It's lightweight for a DSLR with this level of functionality. It's comfortable at a sporting event, in the studio, and everywhere in between. And it supports a fantastic assortment of Nikon lenses and gear that is already available. What's not to like about the D600?